explanation? I would do that, but my phone got scripted on me. Um, so. Right. Everybody doing good? Yeah. Fine, good. Fine, good. Right. Right. We're gonna do something a little um different to to start because I was pretty inspired. I, I know not all of you were here Sunday, but um I was pretty inspired by the. The message glow preached and um I'm gonna come back guys I just gotta go yeah did it work yeah I'm recording it now okay I got a thing too that I ordered. So if we ever use the iPad like TJ does, you could just it'll clip a mic here. Oh, perfect. And that way you can. It's two of them. So I like you guys it. have a tag team. Got two two mics. I like it. I like it. Okay. Don't close that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it recording? Do, 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 do. Yeah. All right. So I was inspired. <laughs> So, because I was inspired, we're going to start tonight out a bit differently. Um, each and every one of us in here has some, we have more than one thing in common, but there's something we all have in common. We got one of these. So, usually when I open these nights, we open up in prayer, either I pray or I ask somebody to pray. But we're going to do something a little different tonight. Because we all have one of these, we all going to pray. And as the Holy Spirit is present with us tonight, we all gonna receive something. But there's oftentimes when I come in here and, and we do do study, sometimes there's a there's a heaviness, there's a whatever we walk in with because of, of life, right? You, you, why the, the the reason the whole term fighting good, because every time we come in here there's there's been some sort of fight, right? So the one thing that's pressed on my heart is is we gotta we gotta speak up because that enemy loves our silence. He loves us just being quiet and whatever is whatever is building on the inside of us that is a negative, torturous, tormenting, whatever you want to call it, he wants us to keep that bottled in. So it ain't going to be much, but I'm literally just going to go around the room. I'm probably going to start with um, hey, Annie, and we'll just go around. You can say but two words. It don't matter. Just say whatever you want to say. All I'll say is this. Just say it unto the Lord. It could be one word. It could be two words. It, it don't got to be little. It don't got to be much. But just say it unto the Lord and say it as as a as a as authority for yourself in Christ on behalf of everybody here. Because everybody's gonna be encouraged. Okay? I know I'm asking a little bit of, of y'all, but I think I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So how about this? I'll start, I'll pass it to you, Annie, and we'll just go around. And then I'll let it do that. All right. Lord Jesus, tonight I want to receive everything that you have for me to hear. It's 
so that I can be the man that you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I ask you for strength to do with the things that are happening in my life right now. I pray that my family may be fixed or if that's not your plan, that I have the peace to do with whatever your plan is for the future. <clears throat> Lord, I just I pray for a spirit of fullness upon myself and everyone else here, a spirit of humility. Just Lord, that you would grow the fruits of the spirit with us, Lord. Um in Jesus' name, amen. So Lord, we pray that you will um, remove all doubt from us and help us to walk in your boldness and your authority and in faith and that you would use us to help lift and encourage others so they can also come to live in the same way you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Lord, I pray that you continue to give me the strength to speak but you show me and not not doubt myself and, and turn down you I pray that you give me the strength to to be bold in everything to show me and express it to the world and that everyone else here shares that boldness. Thank you Jesus. Dear Lord, I pray for your grace and mercy and for a continued spirit of obedience amongst us so we can continue to listen to you and allow you to guide us. Lord, I'd like to say that I'm grateful for everything that I overcame and everything that is to come. Uh, so please guide and protect those that are that are here to protect us as well. Jesus, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just agree with everything that everybody's prayed here today, Lord. And as your spirit is present with us right now, may tonight be a night of liberation, empowerment in your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> you know, it's really telling when you you get in a space and you hear people be intimate with their with their Lord and Savior. Because what I heard was relationship. You speaking directly to the, the Father about on your behalf, on behalf of other people, but it, it's it's you talking to him. And there's something about peering through the window and seeing perspective from other people in their relationship with Christ and the vulnerability of, wow, I'm not the only one who's got this or dealing with this or thinking this or feeling this. or That's what you said on Sunday. We, we all grow stronger. So... I don't know. Does that feel good? <laughs> That's good for me. Um, so tonight we are gonna we're gonna be talking about uh, something that is very near and, and 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 dear to my heart, and it's because of what the Lord has done and continues to do in my life, in my family's life, and. I believe it will bless uh, each and every person here. And I believe that it, it will lift you um, towards, towards Jesus. So tonight we're going to be talking about soul care and post deliverance. Soul care and post deliverance. Deliverance. Now, I'll start with this. 
when you get delivered from something, whether it was uh, whether it was fear, whether it was uh, rejection, whether it was uh, timidity, whether it was abuse, no matter what it was that you've been delivered from, I want to make something very, very um, clear to everybody. Oftentimes, when we get delivered from something, something else is revealed. Something else is revealed. Meaning, there's a picture that can be painted that when you're free of something, life automatically gets better. And I'm here to tell you that actually most times it's the opposite, at, at least at first. And here's the reason why. The enemy hides and feeds on ignorance. That's what the enemy habitates is ignorance. So if there's an area of our life where we don't have freedom, but we don't even know that we don't have the freedom because we don't even know that that freedom exists. You see where I'm going? And oftentimes, and I heard a couple of testimonies uh, from Sunday, and, and, and I will pause in this study because I want to hear from you guys as well. I did hear uh, some of the feedback was like, yeah, I didn't even know that was there. I, I, did, I had no idea I was that I was struggling with that. But when I got delivered from it, or at least the enemy was exposed, I was like, wait a second, I've been dealing with this this whole time, I didn't even know? The enemy hides in our ignorance. We simply just don't even know he's there. So I don't, what I don't want here is for anybody to be discouraged because maybe you saw a picture of what it looks like to be delivered and everything's flowers and roses after the fact i'm here to tell you that that's a lie yeah. if anything the enemy is now more exposed which he does not like so he then retaliates. But I'm here to tell you that the heart of Christ is saying, don't give up. Just because it gets worse does not mean that you aren't on the cusp of something beautiful. And because you're on the cusp of something beautiful, the enemy will try everything possible to stop it. So the battle really begins. Now, deliverance from demons is actually like level one of deliverance. I know it's a big theatrical thing that, that you can see. It's really level one. The, the biggest deliverance you can ever receive is, is the revelation of Jesus. In here and in here. In here and in here. So we're going to talk about soul care and we're going to talk about post deliverance. So I got some verses here. We'll, we'll get some readers. So I got First Peter uh, 1, 13 to 16, or somebody could grab that. That's First Peter 1, 13 to 16. Okay, thanks, Glenn. And then I also have uh, Romans 8, 5 to 6. That's Romans 8, 5 to 6, or somebody could grab that. Thank you, Jay. And then I got last one, Proverbs 4, 
20 to 23. That's Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. Shout out, maybe you got that one. Whoever's going to read that one. I can do that one. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Let's go to 1 Peter 1, uh, 13 to 16. We'll start there. I have the NIV version. Okay. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope. Fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Let's stop right there. Read from the top again, Will. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Stop right there. <clears throat> I'm sorry, which one was it? First so, Peter. Yeah, first one. Peter 1, 13 to 16. So, and then the version I have, it says, therefore, preparing your minds for action. What do we think that means? Preparing your minds. Be ready in your mind for action. Like prepare yourself mentally for change. Okay. For challenge. Okay. Y'all just gonna come out the gate swinging. Well, started it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Anybody else? There your minds for action. Well. Preparing your minds for a challenge, and you said change. Mm -hmm. Anybody in here have been hurt, hit with a, a curveball? I don't think there's anybody sitting at this table that ain't been hit with one of those. So how would it benefit one of us, or any of us, to prepare our minds for a challenge or change and 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 ahead of time that's what preparation is it's it's something that hasn't come yet but you're you're getting ready right how would that benefit you um you're going to go um i mean when that curveball comes you're going to be you're going to be ready to swing for it mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still coming, but you know, you either can swing at it, maybe you can. Yeah, <laughs> it's having the discernment to know how to go about, I don't know, what the curveball, what's, whatever's coming at you. Like when you're getting hit, you already expect it. You, you're able to do something about it, or it hurts less because you already expect it. But if you don't expect it, then it's a surprise. You don't know what to do, and it hurts a lot more because you didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like deliverance. Because how did I just start off the session? Oh, I got delivered. It's all flowers and roses now. It feels so good, Jay. It feels so good. Everything just feels crazy. And you get hit. <laughs> and you, because your mind wasn't prepared, you weren't expecting. And it crippled you. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to say, don't, don't allow the enemy to cripple you in the process of deliverance, of renewing the mind, whatever it may be. Keep going, go. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Okay, stop right there. Be self-controlled and focus on what? Grace. How could be being self-controlled help any one of us 
in our preparation in the mind. Because you don't want to act out of character or out of emotion. Say that again, Jack. You don't want to act out of emotion. Which pretty much echoes what Bill just said. Act out of character. Why would I act out of character or out of emotion? Why would you act out of character or out of emotion? Because you just got hit. <laughs> You're attacked in some form. Or like you said, you were hit with a curveball. It's nothing you were expecting. Sometimes when that happens, you fall back into like instinct, like your first instinct. Mm -hmm. And it's, your first instinct is to flesh like, yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. 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 you want to go back to what's comfortable. Whether it's anger, it's mm -hmm. lashing out, it's emotion. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing no prep work in advance, not only am I going to get hit, but my reaction will also bring me down. Just like God doesn't want to do anything halfway, don't think for a second the enemy's not mimicking God in his activity as well. He's not just trying to uppercut cut you. He's only doing this so he can come through and... Mm -hmm. But that's how he's slick, Brian. Because he'll just get you to do it. Acting out of emotion. Mm -hmm. Acting out of character. He'll just get you to do it. It was so sacrifice. Correct. Keep going, boy. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. There's that word. Ignorance. Just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. But just as he who called you is be holy. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So this begs a question, Glow. What does it mean to be holy? To be like Jesus. Let's aspire to be. Let's 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 tug on that a little bit. We're going somewhere. To aspire to be like who? Mm -hmm. But that's that's but that's too hard, I mean. I mean so you expect me to be like Jesus? I mean, you see the flesh? Yeah, but it's by his grace. It's, we're not doing this by ourselves. If we were to do it by ourselves, we would never be able to accomplish. That's why you died for us. And it's understanding the fact that you're also not perfect. Yes. You think, wait, so I've had this thing wrong the whole time? Wait a second. Glow, you read something. You There was a word grace in there. Go back, because I don't think I understood something that was being said there. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is your bed. Ah, see, I skipped over that part because I didn't understand it. Grace! Mm -hmm. So, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. So, I'm preparing my mind in advance for the punch that's coming my way, the uppercut. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, so that when the punch comes, because we know it's coming, mm -hmm. my reaction after the fact is not one of acting out of character or emotion. Or acting or out of grace. Wait a second. So what does it mean then to act out of grace? Because grace is, mm -hmm. is a, it's a gift, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. So, so how what does that look like? I don't understand. What is acting out of grace? I think look like. I think it means like because grace is something that you acknowledge. Hey, this is something that I can't 
like in a way it's something you can't really provide yourself like you it's humbling and which is why it's difficult to act like uh, out of grace um am i making sense you're getting there you're yeah getting there. Does anybody want to help her out <laughs> Can you ask the question again? I'll ask it. I'll ask it this way: Whose grace is it? Is it mine? It's God's grace. But it is within all of us because the Holy Spirit is within all of us. So if it's God's grace that I now have, what does that? mean now when I get punched and my instinct is to give up <laughs> or you know what I mean fight or flight whatever those terms they use how does grace help me to deal with the situation like how else could I deal with the situation now that grace is involved you don't act out of instinct, right? When grace is involved, you, I think we do more. Like, you can give it to God. It's less of a weight on yourself, less of, okay, I need to act on this. I need to do this. It's more of just, I have God's grace. God will handle it type of thing. That's my interpretation. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like absorbing it. Like, you know, sit on the top. Mm -hmm. It's absorbing all of our ugliness and sin and stuff. Oh. Yeah, and you do. I think you, by grace, you act more patient. So you t you kind of take a while to be like, okay, this is what has been. That's what happened with my life. Here's what I can change. Here's what I cannot change. What you can't change, you give to God. What you can change, you go and do your part. Because God helps you, but you gotta help God to help you because you know you're free. And all of that yeah, I would say to piggyback off of that similar where it's like because you're more self-controlled you can kind of say okay you know I gotta do this I'm gonna let you do that yes exactly like acting out of grace isn't it's not giving back the same energy that was just given to you it's doing better being better hmm How do you fight a spirit? It, like an evil one. It's out of the world. Yeah. Out of Yeah. Someone had told me this week, you do that by doing exactly what the devil does not expect from you. Mm -hmm. So you do what the devil doesn't expect you to do. Mm -hmm. you guys are all right I'll sum it up this way you fight a spirit with an opposite spirit side A side B it's the grace that allows you to operate in the love, joy, peace Patience, kindness, long suffering, gentleness, patience, self control. It's his grace. Meaning, you were never meant to just do it in your own strength. That's why I asked, whose grace is it? Like, where did it come from? That's the revelation. Because it didn't come from us. When we fight the enemy, we're not using our own strength to fight it. There's a big difference. See, the, the revelation of this completely annihilates fear. And doubt. 
because you're not even fighting on your on 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 you didn't show up to war and and without a backer <laughs> meaning the person that's backing you you could be in the ring with Muhammad Ali it wouldn't matter the person backing you and oh by the way supernaturally they're they're the coach they're in the ring too with you fighting with you they're the crowd on the outside chair go ryan go tj They represent everybody that's for you in that arena, arena in one person. What you just said changes the whole world. That's the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus is in the ring with you, and he's on the sidelines coaching. And he's in the crowd cheering for me. Serve up whatever opponent, though. <laughs> Bring him, come. Bring him. I'll 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 slice him like um uh what's that? Uh, Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> I really want us to, to catch this revelation because I, I believe it's going to change the whole way we we fight. And and the the rest of what Glow uh, finished when she was reading there is like, as obedient children, don't be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. So like, there's another nuance. Am I just passionate about um, things that are good? Like what if I'm passionate, of, of, like I'm passionately afraid to get in that ring again. I'm so passionate about not getting in the ring because I don't want to get hit. I'm definitely afraid to get hit. And I definitely don't feel like there's anybody out there with me. So, if you go in the ring with that mindset, you lost. And where did we say when we started? Where does the devil hide? Where does the enemy hide? In our ignorance. So, if you don't know that Jesus is in the ring, he's the coach, he's in the stands. Of course you're not going to want to get in that ring. You're going to want to run out the building. And I get it. I would want to run out the building too if I didn't know that he was in the ring and the coach and the stands. All of it. Because what did we say Sunday? The fight is fixed. Now if I realize all of what I just said, that he's all those people in one place at one time. How can I not lose? The only thing I have to do that only I can control is not giving up. That's it, TJ. That's it. That's all I have to not do. So wait a second, you're telling me that all I have to do is not give up and I'm going to come out of this thing victorious. Ryan, I'm not sure they get it. You're telling me you're telling me that no matter what comes my way or been coming my way Let's say, let's say you, okay, we're talking about deliverance. Let's say you got deliverance from something. Now a whole bunch of other demons rear their uh, their ugly heads. Mm -hmm. 
So you mean to tell me not only were they there the whole time, and now I, I just defeated one, but now I'm faced with the truth, because I'm not ignorant no more, Destiny. I know they're there. I see them now. I have eyes to see them. So I got all these demons in front of me. And I realized, oh, wait a second. He in the ring. Jesus in the ring. He the coach. He in the stands. Oh, shoot. I can't be ignorant no more. Because now I know they <laughs> Oh, yeah. I I I I did that already, but now they expose. So crap. I guess that's not an option. I guess I gotta get in that ring, Jay. Dang. You got me. Oh, wait, but the fight is fixed. Okay, moving on. Um, just don't give up. Skip so this is the this is the reality of 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 post deliverance slash soul care. And let me just talk about soul care for a second, and then we're gonna hear some some feedback uh, to encourage one another. Um, deliverance is 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 one thing. But there's a healing that comes after deliverance through soul care. What is soul care? Soul care is, is renewing the mind. Okay, let's let's break it down even more. What's renewing the mind? You've come out of the ignorance that the enemy tried to keep you in. You're seeing things for what they truly are. You're choosing to confront that reality instead of hide from it. But if there's a reality of the enemy that I didn't realize this whole time, what if there's a reality of Jesus that I also didn't realize this whole time? Ooh. Wait a second. See, that's why that's why the Lord has to show us most times how the enemy works. Because if we don't know how the enemy works, it won't give Jesus the opportunity to show how he works. Let's go back to that ring analogy. I'm in the ring with Ali. Dre, we talking about boxing. If I'm in the ring with Ali and he starts quote butterflies thinking like a bee, that you know, and he and he starts doing this, the quick step and all that stuff, he he do. Now I never seen that before. Cause I was ignorant. I didn't even get in the ring before Jordan. But now I'm in the ring. And I'm fighting with the bee, the butterfly man. And he's doing some crazy stuff I ain't never seen. So how is Jesus going to show me how who he is? If he in the ring with me, how is he going to show me who he is? If I don't need him to counteract what the enemy be doing. Because like I just told you, I ain't never seen Muhammad, like Muhammad Ali swing at me before. I ain't never seen that, Sasha. So I don't know how to handle it. I don't know what to do. Oh, Jesus, you right there? What do I do? What do I do? I don't know what to do. Relax, my son. Sure. Hit his kneecap. Hello. So you need to know how the enemy works so you can know how God works. I'll say that one more time. You need to know how the enemy works so you can know 
how God works. Would Moses ever see God part of Red Sea if the enemy wasn't chasing them to the edge of the sea? There would be no reason for the sea to part. I mean, let's just be real. Satan, let's take it a step further. Satan entered Judas, who had been with Jesus for three years, right before he betrayed him and took him to the cross. So wait a second. You're telling me the enemy don't mind being around Jesus in Jesus's ministry. And then when nobody's looking and they think it's all roses and, and cakes, he betrays him. You got to see how the enemy works if you want to see how God works. But are you going to give up? Or are you going to get in that ring? Who's got the next verse? Go ahead, Jay. Romans 8, 5 to 6. <clears throat> those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Stop right there. Now, I, I, I want to retrain our brain on, on some things. Because a lot of people read scripture and, and honestly, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spiritual baby cycle by which we, we just read everything as... Um. Oh, it's it's sin. Don't sin, and and you'll be you'll be good with Christ. But if that were possible, grace would not be required, would it? No, not really. So read that part again, Jay. <clears throat> Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. So those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Okay. I want you to take out the word sin and I want you to put in there and read that one more time. For what? Put, take out the word sin and replace it with the word ignorance. I want you to read that one more time. Those who are dominated by the ignorant nature think about ignorant things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Uh, wait a second. Okay, anybody want to take a stab at that? What 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 was just being read there? Anybody? Yeah. Everything you said. Good. I mean, it, it ties in perfectly with the last scripture, and that's self control. Mm -hmm. And that's preparing your mind, mm -hmm. knowing that spirits within you. So not allowing the ignorance mm -hmm. to come before your spirit. So sinning is really just your, is just our ignorance yep. of the revelation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me let me give you a, let's do a practical. Let's let's get it real basic. TJ, I um you know, sometimes um I don't get the contract at work. And when that happens, I get super anxious. Like cuz I don't know when the next contract's going to come. So now I'm anxious. Wait a second. What is what is being anxious? I'm, I'm worrying. So what is worrying? It's a cousin of fear. It's a cousin of fear. So I'm fearful. You're doubtful. I'm doubtful. Mm -hmm. So why would that be a, a how, how could that be me sinning? You're not trusting God. Wait a second. So if if sinning is is really just 
ignorance. So if there's stuff we don't know about the enemy, remember I said that? Hmm. Then there's probably stuff we don't know about Jesus either. So if I'm if my default when something goes south at work and immediately I go to anxiety and worry, I'm missing something. Because if Jesus in the ring, when I got hit with that rejection of the deal, but he's in the ring with me. If I'm worrying, does that does that mean that I'm acknowledging that he's in the ring with me? If you're worrying. If I'm worrying. Does am I no? No. I'm not worrying. I mean, we're the human flesh, so it, I mean, you are going to worry, but it's not say so you give up on him, knowing that he's there with you at the same time. It's just like, to me, taking that sinful nature is just, we're human flesh, but we should know and acknowledge when we're sinning. That's the, that's being obedient to Christ. I'm, I just took it, I just look at it like this, sorry. If you have a dollar in your bank, mm -hmm. and you got a bill coming up, dollars for that bill, you know, you start thinking like, hey, what am I going to do after that bill comes out? But if you got a million dollars in your bank account and you got a dollar bill that's going to come out, you're not worried about that dollar. It's true. Just like we get in our ring, Jesus in the ring with you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus big like that. And he going against whoever. Jesus in the crowd. And they all big in the crowd. Jesus is the coach. And he's huge too. What you got to worry about? Mm -hmm. So let's so let's go even more practical here because I think this is going to help somebody. <clears throat> That's all well and good, TJ. But I, don't want that. I can't not worry, at least initially, when these things come up. So. I, you know, that's, you can't just, I'm not a robot. I can't just not worry. Well, you can't give your words to God. Like there's the big, big exercise that I do. It's like, okay, all my worries in my little box, and I'm actually just so to God. And I'm like, really, like, I can lots of time, and I get peace, and I'm like, peace with the world. When did you decide to do that? After our call. Did everybody hear what she just said? Mm -hmm. I like that. So wait a second. So you made a decision in advance for whatever is going to come next where there may be a worry. And then when that worry comes up, you have a plan in place of how to deal with it. Yeah, I'm going. So, uh, my coach calls it, um, my business coach, he calls it managing during non conflict. So, when you not worry, like glow red. Prepare your mind for action. That way, when the worry comes, I, I can't help it. Okay, you see this much. The worry don't come. But did I prepare? And if I prepared, when that worry comes, like I was saying to somebody the other day, and I, I, I mean, we're all old enough here. Let's say a, a lustful thought comes into your mind about somebody. What happens once that lustful thought comes? You're supposed to pray it out, lock it out. Yep. Think about your grandma. <laughs> no, but seriously though, if we took, if we take what she just said about how she intentionally prepares in advance 
for when worry shows up. Why can't we do that with everything else? So my question to you is, have you prepared your mind for the things that you know come up on a regular basis? And what you're going to do once they come up? In other words, it's not about it coming up. Because like we talked about in the beginning, don't think you're going to walk through life and not get hit. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. Do you have a plan for when you get hit? No. So when you get hit, hit up in the knee. Or duck. Or wh whatever it, it may be. Well, you got to think of when even everything you have a plan for you. This is true. That's where you're in trust Oh. So whatever is something you're looking for the best. There's a very important revelation for what she just said. Because if you're in the ring, like I said, I'm fighting Muhammad. I never seen him throw a punch at me. I've seen it on TV, mm -hmm. but he fights somebody else. I never seen him fight me before. So I'm not prepared for that type of hit. I don't know what that's going to feel like, TJ. I don't. So when I get hit and I go down, because I, I will go down, Dre. <laughs> <laughs> now the question is, oh my goodness, I just got hit so hard by Muhammad Ali and I'm on the ground. Do I stay down here? What, what do I do? That tank comes down real good. <laughs> 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 right? I mean, I'm at least wait till nine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm give myself a fighting chance. <laughs> so that's where the trust is going to have to come in at. Because if I understand the revelation of Jesus, the fact that he's not just a coach, but he's in the ring. So when I get up, I have no idea what the enemy going to throw back at me because I know we ain't going to stop but what we say earlier you only got one job don't do it yeah. uh, you don't have to know what the next move is now you can do your part in, in, in educating yourself to be aware that it's going to come that it's going to come and my prayer is when the, the one that really hits you sideways like the cheap nod that Muhammad just gave me. See, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the floor. Curdle, TJ. Um, when that one comes, maybe it came already, or maybe it's coming, mm. or it gonna come, because mm. it gonna come. That's the one where Jesus is really saying, "That's what I really gonna need you to stand back up, son. Stand back up, dog. That's the one." We're going to pause, and um, does anybody want to share any um, comment or, or testimony, um, either from last Bible study or Sunday? Remember last Bible study, we talked about uh, deliverance from a guilty conscience. That one. Either side. <laughs> going once, going twice. So, um, Sunday, I thought I was um, a spirit, an unseen spirit, and then it fell for it. Did you start when you got the way you started? Yeah, that makes it all the same. I've been delivered like multiple times. Don't feel discouraged. As long as you're fighting. Yeah. Just wow. keep your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Man, I looked at faith like 
completely different because I thought you think you come to church and you just get saved and that's it. No, you're gonna get breaking down. There's so much more trials and tribulation you're gonna go through while you when you go through your your, your faith. And when you start breaking down, and get, it's just like you join the military. You go to the military, you know what they do? They break you down. They, they, you can't listen. You can't watch TV. You can't talk to nobody. You can't listen to the radio. You can't. They just, they take you down to nothing. God basically does the same thing to you. He's going to break you down and build you back up. Because you got to think about it. What can you do for anybody if you've never been broken down? Or if you never go through these trials, or you never go through all the stuff that you go through, you can't speak about it. You can't speak how good God is because you never went through it. It's experience. Yes, ex exactly. It's experience. And that's one of the main things. We can't say, hey, we don't wish up, okay, I want bad to happen to me so I can speak about it. No. Things are just going to happen, and you're going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's where you're going to be able to speak about it while you find your faith. And those spirits that you're saying that you're having, Little by little, those spirits are going to be going away. It's not going to say overnight, okay, it just, it's just gone. No. Those fighting spirits that you have, you're going to be fighting them. You're going to be fighting more spirits. And those trials and those testimonies you're going to be going, it's going to start little by little. It's just going to be going away. And just give it its time. That's all you do. <laughs> Trust in God. Like when they come up, the first thing I tell them, start praying. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Start praying it away. Just keep going. The enemy know that's your weak point. So he's going to know, hey, just the way God knows your weak point, the enemy knows that your weak point too at the same time. So you got to be able to say, hey, God, I've been trusting you. Take this out of your book. That's it. There it is. <laughs> there also, it is. Um, I feel like sometimes when it comes to like impure spirits or really anything in life, we feel like, oh, this needs to happen soon because we feel anxious, but you can't put a time limit on it because. God is working, like, if you try to put a time limit on it, then he's also going to be working on your patience at the same time. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's working out for our so good. So, like, the closer you get to God, you're going to feel like you sin the most. So, like, yes. <laughs> so sometimes you feel like, oh, spirit isn't leaving, but sometimes, like, a part of it left, or, you know, it started to leave, mm -hmm. like, you just think it's so much because you started to see more things around you that you didn't realize before you were thinking yeah. about. You got different levels too. I want to make sure we are aware of this too that there are crafty spirits. So you guys have to be mindful of this when you're speaking about this topic. It's very sensitive and there are crafty spirits that are inside of people that they don't know that they have spirits. So when you're saying something, part of what you said is you guys have to be mindful that there's a lot of things that we are not exposed to. If we don't have that experience mm -hmm. and that knowledge following Christ to know the depths of the end. It's true. Like, you guys can have family members that may put things in your family. Mm -hmm. and it could be while you're struggling financially. You don't know that it's true. that have prayed a hex against you, mm -hmm. your marriage, against your health. And you pray to Jesus, you pray to Jesus. But again, that's where they can have from there because people get upset about God. When they hear other believers speak, and it's like, well, I'm doing the same thing. It's not like we experienced last night. I've been doing this for 20 something years, and why is my life like that? But there's a deeper root, mm -hmm. and that's where that, that patience, that spirit of patience comes in. There. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but just that's patience, humility, and then love. Uh, to withstand that spirit, that storm, because it's, you know, and having the right people around you <laughs> to say, hey, look, you know, I mean, that that's, I know personally, because I literally gave my life to Christ in that manner. Everybody who told me they loved me, like, God, they went nowhere around. So here I am, I feel alone, following Christ. But that's how they had to teach me, he's not alone. If you're close to me, then you have a So that, that's, uh, as a church, I want us to be aware of that. Church, I would say, God, there, there's some crap spirits around it that they have the ability to present themselves and speak like they're the light of the world. And no, it's true. 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 It's true.
very, very, very good. They know the they know the word of God. They can quote scriptures mm -hmm. back and front. They were there at the beginning. So I'm um I, I accept in the video to me, and I think the God was talking about deliverance. And he was like, listen, guys, I know people always have something to say, but there are some spirits we can't move out because we're just not at that level. He says mm -hmm. it just depends. You got to take a bunch of folks to get the right that have the right from fast things to a lot of different things. That's true. To get there. Otherwise, it's 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 tough. He says, but what I will say, that's kind of what he says, you don't give up by abandoning your faith and saying, Hey, look, kind of like what you got to say, hey, my pay your patience with me. God is gonna it, it's it's gonna happen. You know, it's like any sport, you guys see superstars, they didn't just come out in my home like being a superstar. It's like it took crying, it took hurt, it took practice. I mean, they were probably upset. They had a bunch of stuff they had to work through until they understood the mechanics of their body. We got to do the same thing. Understand the mechanics of our spirituality and what bothers right now. That new. I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out. And I ain't embarrassed to say it, the, the mechanics of, of my spiritual walk with Christ. Like, hey, you know, how do I know? You know, like I'm doing this right now, I feel that in my right back, right? But I'm like, okay, how do I know to feel something when I walk in spirit? For myself. It's one thing to teach the word of God, right? When I'm talking about God, I'm strip off the past that had this being a person. Anybody could be a teacher. It's hard to be a student that is a teacher. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. That's true. Yep. Teaching is easy. Speaking is easy. That's 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 cakewalk. You know what I'm saying? I guess you can get music to play by. It's so much stuff that you can do that this word has created to just make you sound so amazing. But so when you're a student, you gotta show up. You're right. That's yep. it. You gotta show up. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's because she keeps looking at me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. Thank you uh, for for sharing with us, and and also I, I want to thank you and, and anybody else um, who spoke you know, perspective and encouragement, because that is super super important. But that's one of your breakthroughs too, not to yeah. cut you off, just speaking out. And I, I didn't realize that, and that's one of the biggest things is when you could talk about those things. Because before we used to, like, you just start holding it in. And once you start knowing Christ, man, you just start. <laughs> you start. All that stuff start coming out. Yeah, there, there it is. <laughs> he, he wasn't even here. It's, he wasn't even here when we started. And what, and what, what was said when we, when we got here? What did we all do before we started studying? We, yeah. we all prayed. <laughs> Speak up. I mean, that was a lot. Speaking of, I was struggling this Saturday. Not Sunday, a lot. I just called Josh. I'm like, Josh, everything's going wrong in my life. And then he prayed over me. And I was able to go to work perfectly fine. I had a great day. <laughs> so, helps to speak up, to have the system of support. There it is. Let's keep going. Um, we're going to go down. Did we finish, Jay, what you were reading? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's go to Proverbs 4 now. 4, 20, and 22. Is this a, Proverbs is supposed to be in the beginning of the Bible or towards the end of it? Like, it's like right after, after or before Psalm? Psalm. It's after Psalms before Ecclesiastes. You said 20 through 23, right? 20 to 23, yeah. <laughs> Not going to be too much longer. Okay, go ahead, Ryan. All right, ready? Yep. All right. My son, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Guard your heart above all else. For it is the sword of life. What did he just say is harder to be than a teacher? Student. 
Who's talking? Wasn't you? Hey, go ahead. I think maybe like David or Solomon. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, he's on my child. Who's 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 the son? It says my son. Who who could that represent? Oh, us. Are your kids? Children. Yeah. Read that one more time, Ryan. <laughs> My son is always conscious in my word, listen closely to my saying. Don't lose sight of them, keep them within your heart. For they are like to those who find them and help to one's whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. So, clearly God knew that we was going to all be in the ring of life, if you will. That we was all going to get hit. That every now and then we was going to encounter a Muhammad Ali and he's going to do some stuff you ain't never seen happen to you. Maybe you've seen it on TV, but you ain't never been in a ring with him. And he's going to hit you. And you might go down. So while I'm down on the ground, right, and I'm curdled because I'm, you know, that countdown happening now, like 10, nine, and I'm contemplating. I'm, I'm just being honest. Do I get back up? Do I just stay here? Do I let the, the clock run out? Do I, what do I do? So in that moment, what is something that I could think about because remember we're talking about preparing the mind so I obviously couldn't pre be prepared for that hit because I've never experienced that hit before mm -hmm. so what, what do I do then you just got hit with something you ain't never been hit before with in your life you remember his promises shit go yeah do the next best thing What's the next best thing? With scripture. Mm. Yeah, this uh, translation says, uh, let them penetrate deep into your heart. Mm -hmm. okay. So find comfort in God. What did we all do before we started praying? Okay. And I'll be more specific. Each and every one of us talk directly to, to who? Mm -hmm. Jesus. And and I think we all prayed our own prayers to, mm -hmm. to him. I, I I mean, I don't know about you guys. I, I felt it was personal between all of us. Like mm -hmm. it was it was like none of us were here. It was just like you and the Lord. Is communication one way? No. There's two sides. Two sides. Okay. What do you say back to you? Now, this doesn't have to be complicated at all. We could sit around all day and, and talk about the million different ways God speaks. But I will say this. When he talk, you gonna know. It might just be a, you know what, all hell breaking loose. I don't even know why I got peace right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This don't make no sense. Why I'm feeling okay, even though literally the the roof fell off, the the walls coming down, the sandstorm.
you'll know. So when he says, my son, remember my words. That is something that we all, like he said, in our personal pursuit of Christ, have to come to terms with and discover for ourselves. What is he saying directly to us? There's not a single person here, including her, who can't hear from God. So if she can hear from God, never doubt that you can hear from God. Because every time he looks at you, Jay, Jay, I'll tell you what he sees. Every time he looks at you, every time God the Father looks at you, he sees his son. That's who he sees. So if he can have communication with his son, and that's what he sees when he looks at you, you best believe he going to say something to you. <laughs> so to conclude, soul care, Post deliverance, some things that, like you said, you didn't know about the enemy. It's starting to be more and more exposed. Remember the 333 30 million demons. But if Jesus is in that ring with you, you won't know how his how mighty his power is until Muhammad hits you square between the nose. The greater attack of the enemy, the greater the opportunity of God's power to manifest in your life. Not, not because. Of anything other than you deciding not to give up. Because if you don't give up, then Jesus says, okay, I can work with that. You 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 willing to get up, son? I mean, I know you bruised, I know you got a black eye, I know. Can you get back up? All right, I got you. So no matter how crazy the journey gets, maybe you got delivered from one demon. Now, now you see 10 demons in front of you, you ain't never seen before. I didn't know that. <laughs> in the ring. And let's just be honest, they were there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. they were there the whole time. Like, Ain't nothing new under the sun. Come on. There was a rat. Also, what you told me that regarding what's happening with my family. Now that we know that they are there and a lot of things are starting to get exposed, mm -hmm. they're trying to speed up their process. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to speed up their destruction. Correct. Then so we're going to notice them. Because they have a timeline. So the more closer to freedom you get, what do you think they're going to do? Time goes yeah. time. Yeah. They're going to give you everything. This is very, very, like you said, there's a, there's, we don't have, we'll never have a full grasp until we enter the kingdom of heaven of, of how deep this thing goes. But this is the, the bare essentials of how the enemy works. Be encouraged. For the battle ahead, no matter what comes, no matter what, I mean, she said it, twist and turns, right? The 
don't give up. And speak to him. And speak up. Don't be silent. But when you sense him saying something to you, like you, Ryan, don't second guess. Here's, 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 here's the beautiful thing. Even if, let's just say you were wrong. Like, you thought you heard something from him and you didn't hear correctly. Speak up. You think God's going to hold that against you? I don't think so. You think he'll, what do you think he'd do? Uh, so if the fight is fixed, and I don't have to worry about if I get it right, I just have to get up and again and again and again. <laughs> and even if I get it wrong, he'll lead me. What am I tripping for? You know, it's so funny. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but it, it really reminds me of being in school and getting math tutoring. Like when you're figuring out the problems and you're like, oh yeah, I did it right. This test was easy. And then you get it back and you got like a 2%. Like, oh, that, <laughs> that's happened to me. I mean, no, that's never happened. But, you know, <laughs> after the test or whatever, you know, sometimes like, you know, it's just, let's say for now, it's just one test. You can still get help. You know, the teacher is there to help you. Yes, they gave you a test, but that test is still better. Mm -hmm. So here's the homework. And we'll, we'll, we'll stop it here. The homework is this. Um, sorry, skip her name. The homework is this. We need to take what we do after a thought enters our mind very seriously. Very seriously. Because whatever enters the mind is, is the opportunity for the ignorance, which is what the enemy inhabits. So, and I've given this homework before. What legal rights, what contracts is the enemy inhabiting in your mind? Because like we said, I brought up lust. That lustful thought comes in your mind. Okay, it came into mind. Now what you going to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about the girl. What's your boy? How can we how can we be intentional about we're exercising our mind to do something different than what we've been doing. What was the question? It's not a question, it's homework. Can you repeat it? So the homework is this. Be intentional about incorporating something into your daily, weekly, routine, schedule, whatever you want to call it where you're literally retraining your mind on something. It could be anything. Like, I'll just, let's give a real practical example. Um, I got to have a hard conversation with my parents about something. And, um, but I've been, I've, I don't, I've, I've been, I don't want to have this conversation because, um, I think if I have it with them, I think it's going to be like, I think they're going to hate me and I don't want them to hate me. And I think that um, it would be um, bad of me to do that. So. 
So ask yourself, uh, this is a question I would ask myself. You guys might have different questions. Is the thing that I want to talk about them disrespectful? Is the thing that I want to talk to them about something that's going to be good for my overall health by having the conversation or not having the conversation? And am I dishonoring them by having the conversation? Or am I dishonoring them by not having a conversation? Mm -hmm. It could be anybody, by the way. It could be a sibling, your spouse. Maybe there's something you just don't, you just don't be liking about your spouse. And you just <laughs> don't have the, the gall to bring it up to them. You know what? I you know what? I'm just gonna be honest. I and and you've been a you've been avoiding it. So what if that's an opportunity to retrain your mind? about how you think about something. Remember last time Bible said we talked about being delivered from a guilty conscience. There's some things we look at as bad that ain't bad. It's not the thing that's bad, it's how you go about it. And that's where and I I listen, the 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 deliverance that's happened in here it's a fraction of the, the, the deliverances I'm doing on the outside. And even I'm talking about something that's not a demon. You're guilty conscience. So sit down with yourself, by yourself, ask the Lord, talk to yourself. What is something that either I've been fearful of, afraid of, I doubt about, whatever the case may be, and challenge yourself. Is that the way I really need to be thinking about this? Am, or am I missing something? That's it. That's it. That's it. But when God talked back to you, <laughs> now you got a choice. Am I going to listen or... I didn't like the answer, so you know, let me just go back to what I was doing. <laughs> that's that's where the real test comes in. Sure, is that what you mean? Oh, he, he just said something. He just said something. Say it out, Pastor. Oh, this thing is only God versus the enemy. If you're in the creator with it, yeah, yeah, I can tell you right now, yeah. it ain't no demons. <laughs> That's yeah. your flesh. Your yeah. flesh is, I'm supposed to get right, see, demons. You ain't got them. Think about it, it's your flesh. When Adam and Eve have failed, period. That, this skin, right here, that's that's your problem. We all got issues. Because of the fall, every, you, every human being in this world got issues. Even you, little mama. That's your daddy. That's your issue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's it, y'all. Um, we're gonna close out in, in prayer. Max is gonna um um uh, Ryan, can you close this out? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Good Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this evening and the time we spent together and the, the knowledge that you all gave to each other and through your word. I pray that going forward, we're able to use it to see the world in a better light and to lead our lives in a better way toward your kingdom. Mm -hmm. And as Pastor Joshua said, I pray that we all are able to somehow change the way we think about things or a certain thing and are able, it, it enables us to 
make a positive impact on our, not only our lives, but everyone's lives around us and the kitchen to, to get us all closer to your great friend. Amen. All right. Ooh, let's take a selfie. Right. <laughs> we out, we out, man. No, before I take a selfie. I have a question before I go.